Hey, just said it. We're alive right now. We are live right now. That's what. <laughs> Yay! You look hey, so hey. cat cat like too. <laughs> Thanks. I wore my bling today. That that just is so for awesome. This. That is so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the ever famous, ever popular Carla Lytle. Yay! Hi, I, I used to say your name messed up. <laughs> It's okay. Nobody gets my last name right. That's why I went by the cat mommy. Cause I was like, everybody knows how to say that, but my last name, forget it. <laughs> oh, and Dana's on watching. Hey, Dana. Dana's like a wicked cat person too. Her cat marshmallow. I yes. love kitties. They're yeah, the best. Her, cat, her cat's a, of course, a black cat named marshmallow. Oh, I love it. Yeah, I love black cats. Irony. I've never owned a black cat, but basically everybody that I see on Instagram that has a black cat talks about how much they love them and how good they are and sweet they are. So, I mean, I, I'm definitely down to own a black cat. I know some people aren't, which kind of sucks because they have a stigma, which I think is insane. And I haven't found them a lot different than any other cat, just the color. You know, me and the kid were talking about this the other day. When you have a dog, which now you you think I'm like Satan because I have a dog. I think you're a traitor. I mean, I'm just going to say it. You You are. I mean... Uh, but it's okay. So, I still love you anyway. Whatever. It's fine. People, people ask me st something every time with the dog that I didn't expect because the dog's a hound dog. Let's let's face it. It's like 58 degrees of whatever kind of dog, right? But everyone always says, what kind of dog is that? No one ever says that about the cat. What kind of cat is that? You know, one, and, of, one of my favorite memes is a meme that says, um, Oh, look at my Labradoodle Poodle blah, blah, blah mix. It's like a dog. And then it's this cat. And it's like, his name is Tom. He's orange. We love him. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that's, that's how it is with cats. They're like, they're yeah, fuzzy they're and precious. I don't too. care. They just say the color when it's the cat. What, what yeah. kind of cat? Yeah, a red one, a black <laughs> yeah. one. Yeah, they just say, right. So the, the dog, and they, they all want to know, like, what kind of dog? A uh, hound dog? You know, it's like, yeah. Yeah. It's a mix of a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I, I thought it was kind of funny that the dog is 54 pounds. So it's a medium kind of dog. And I got him that way on purpose because of the cats. They oh, were saying. So survive. Right. And yeah. I, 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 the person that wrote the review for the dog to get him adopted um, thought it was. Oh, JP's writing something nasty in the comments. <laughs> My favorite pussy lovers. <laughs> oh, I thought you meant like mean. Okay. No, 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 <laughs> okay. no. I was no. like, oh, I can't see the comments. Being a dirty boy, a dirty boy. <laughs> no. Uh, um, like he would know anything about that. I mean, I'm just saying. Ooh, <laughs> so that, that particular anatomy part or that particular animal. He doesn't want to know anything. <laughs> Stay in your yeah. lane. <laughs> Stay in your lane. Oh, Janet hates that word. That's not the word that Molly hates. <laughs> oh, it's you didn't speak. how you use it. I mean, back in the day, I remember back in the day, um, the little skunk from the uh, oh, the animated series, Peppy Le Pew. Yes. And then there was, uh, wasn't the little bird? I thought I saw a putty cat. Wasn't that the bird? Yes, Tweety like Bird. cartoon dates, yeah. Yeah. Long time ago. So, just depends on how you're using it, you know? <laughs> it's an old well, so, bird. So, the person writing the thing up in Pet Finder for Bo obviously never had a cat, is what I'm thinking, because they said, you may want a baby gate because of Bo's shenanigans. And, I'm, and I translated that to, ooh, maybe Bo can hold his own for my little four little thugs. Because I knew, I knew a little bitty dog. Mm, everybody says they're like the chihuahuas and stuff are vicious. You'd have to be pretty vicious to survive my four little thugs. Well, so, and your cats aren't little tiny. No babies, like, and no. I think that's it. some some cats are are bigger than others, and some cats can handle it better. Um, and and one good thing with big dogs is, or at least from what. I know of other people. I've never, I haven't had a dog since I was like a really, really little kid. Um, and that was the one time. And then it was cats from then on. Um, but the thing about big dogs is a lot of times they're a lot more tolerant than the little dogs. So they, they tend to get along better at, 
most of the time, I'm not going to say all the time because you're always going to have an exception to a rule, but the majority of time, they tend to get along a little better um, than, than a little dog would because a little dog, I think, it's territory. And a big dog doesn't, a big dog's like, man, I'm here. You know, like, this is all mine. I'm huge. <laughs> um, so, but I'm glad that they are getting along with the cats because I really thought Kissy was going to give them a run for his money because Kissy is the queen, you know. Of the castle. Well, and they, at first, Kissy didn't come around for like a couple months. It was scary. And um, now, oh, you can't, if you pat the dog, you're going to have Kissy right there because they want equal attention, equal, not 98, 97. <laughs> they want 100, 100. <laughs> and I mean, they're roll, both right there. <laughs> and you My start with your bows like, pet me, ignore her, ignore her. <laughs> well, cats get, um, they do get jealous. I think cats, I, I don't know because I've never owned a dog, but um, I definitely know my cats get jealous. Like if I'm giving one attention, the other one's like looking at me like, I hate you so much right now. And I'm like, have to go give them attention. It's like back and forth all the time. So they definitely have a era of them where they want to be the top. And for cats, it's a lot of times it's territorial. It's just something in their DNA. I think it's a lot more with male cats than female cats when you have two males. I know most of yours are girls, but one. And I've, the majority of my life, only had boy cats. Um, that was, I didn't want to, I didn't want a girl cat. I had one girl cat one time. And I know your cats, <laughs> I know your cats. And I love them. They're precious. They're divas. <laughs> and they are not little cuddle bucks. Like, they no, are no, like no. ferocious, like, fighters. <laughs> so I was like, Ever since I met every girl cat I've met, the majority of them are not as cuddly as the boys. They're just not. The boys, like, it's Fluff, right? Fluffers? Fluffer, he's cuddly. Oh, yeah, he's yeah. cuddly because he's a you boy. You put a Fluffer upside down, yeah. you know, clothes on him and everything. Yeah, yeah. he don't I care. Mean, he don't care. I, I, I don't, and I mean, again, I'm not saying it's all female cats, but I think if the mass majority, if you, if you put it on a graph, Boys would be more cuddly than girls. So See, if you're thinking about getting about a cat as a... and want a cuddly one, I suggest a male. And it's cheaper to have them spayed or neutered, which all yeah. pets should be spayed or neutered. Um, just a little shout out for the spay and neuters. Um, yeah, I do a that lot of places, <laughs> A lot of places in a lot of towns, if you can't afford to have your pet spayed and neutered, look into free resources. There are places that will do them for free certain times a year. Most of the time it's in the spring, which is coming up. So. Shout out to yeah, that. Have you neutered? Have you cats We don't need any more kittens. The rescue we got Bo from, they they do it to everyone they find on the street. So Bo was already neutered when we, we got him. But I kind of feel bad for him because all he's got there is like this little flap of skin. <laughs> I call my cats, I say they have little fuzzy ball sacks. They're just nothing in them. No. But they do, cats, cats have little boy cats still have little fuzzies. <laughs> they just I don't, don't, I don't see that on Fluffer. <laughs> really? There's nothing there. No, there's oh, nothing there. Mine, mine have little little fuzzy, fuzzy nothings. They're tiny. You didn't realize we're, we're like live talking about cat bowls. Well, I mean, <laughs> I, think, I think people have to talk about it. I really do. I think people have to talk about it because it's important and people don't talk about spaying, neutering their animals and then we have animals upon animals upon animals right. and that is a serious problem and a lot of people especially with dogs don't want to spay or new or don't want to neuter because of the way it looks and it's so much healthier for yeah. us especially when it comes to cats it is an important topic and you know sometimes i mean it is what it is it's anatomy it's anatomy so uh husband too by the way after i left one of his uh many girlfriends that went through uh, left him two cats and he didn't go have it uh neutered his spade and then he ended up there was at one point this was right before i cut him loose totally there was one point where he had 18 cats in his house yeah. and then he says to me i don't understand why i can't get a girlfriend i'm like two words cat man <laughs> i mean yeah. having, having a couple cats is endearing even three cats on the outside but you got 18 cats no woman's going for that <laughs> well and i mean Again, it goes back to territory and like what the animal needs. And that's a lot of nobody has their own territory. And so, I mean, right. I'm not that's saying that many. you can't. I mean, you really need a big house. You really need a lot of resources. And I mean, it's 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 horrible for cats to reproduce like that. And they do. They reproduce oh. like bunnies almost. 
Dana said deuticles, like testicles, deuticles. And somebody else said that they didn't get the approval from Yardstream, so I can't see their name. But this morning we were talking about tiger nuts for some reason. <laughs> and now we're talking about cat, cat ball sex. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? You remember that, like, really off-color, inappropriate art you had when you were growing up? Remember Me? her? Yeah. You didn't have one? I thought we all had one. I had oh. one. Aren't oh, aunt, you say aunt. aunt. <laughs> oh, oh my god, yeah, no, I didn't get that. I was like, what? I don't say know what art. Is art. I thought, I thought you were like art, and I was like, no, I have no inappropriate art. <laughs> aunt, I forgot aunt. to talk. Southern. Aunt, okay, we yeah. say art up here. The, the aunt, the inappropriate aunt that you had when you were a kid. That's my me. aunt. My That's aunt. me. No, no, I I I didn't have an inappropriate aunt. My aunt was, um, mm, uh, uh -oh. I don't know how to describe her. I would say very, um, I don't know how to describe her. She was, I would not call her the fun aunt. She was more of no. the, the proper type oh. person. Like, yeah, that's like, not me. Really. Always. Yeah, no, I didn't have a fun aunt. No, I, well, so I, I, do, a fun, I do uh, cleavage I dancing. A, <laughs> I had so. a fun great aunt. I had a really no. fun great aunt, my grandmother's um, sister, who I adored literally because of these two things. <laughs> Number one, she would let me stay up as late as I wanted, and we would watch Golden Girls and Designing Women together, and they were like women empowerment shows, and I really loved that, and she was like that. She was a, a widow. And um, she always had like five million kinds of ice cream in her <laughs> freezer, like Kondike bars, anything you wanted. And like, I just loved going over to my aunt Burke's house because she was she was just the bit the most fun ever. And I never will forget every time I pass by her house, she's no longer living. Um, but I like to talk about her because my philosophy is um, people aren't really gone as, as long as you keep their memory alive. And every time I drive past her house, I'm like, that's my Aunt Bert's house. And I remember sitting on that porch and swinging on that swing. And um, yeah, so Janice, I love my Aunt Bert. The word you were looking for for the other aunt is prude. <laughs> <laughs> maybe a little bit. Um, maybe, yeah. we, all have, we all have both of those, the inappropriate aunt and the, the prude aunt. <laughs> we all yeah. have both. I was, I was looking for the word. I was like, I don't want to be mean, but definitely not. I will. I don't get fun from her. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, very, very strict. Fun. I'm not sure I'm fun, but I'm definitely inappropriate. <laughs> hey, so okay. let's get back. Let's do a little bit of work here. <laughs> so okay. somebody get something out of this. Okay. So tell me how um, do you, I don't remember when I met you the first time. Do you? The very first time I met, I sought you out like a missile because oh. you were, um, we were at a conference and I went and sought you out because you were very well known and you were doing great. And I was like, I want to meet her. And so I like <laughs> beelined it for you. And I was like, you know, Hey, um, I'm Carla. I want to, um, I want to ask you a question. I just want to know what's your number one tip. And oh, please I, tell me I was nice to you, please. Please yeah, tell no, me. No, no. Okay. I mean, well, I mean, at the time I was like 20 something. So if you're mean to me, I'm sure it would have not have been not have went well. Um, <laughs> so I'd have been like, stop, you know, or something. Um, because that was where I was at at that at that point in time in <laughs> my life. But you said, I'll never forget the advice you gave to me. You said, um, and I don't know where you were at with your business that time, but you were big, so you were growing. And you said, whatever you start doing when you first start. <laughs> Set it up like you you have a whole bunch of people that way that you don't have to keep reinventing systems that work for you. Like start with the end in mind when you start developing your system. Oh, I so still that, say that today. Yeah, I still so say that. So that you're not yeah. recreating stuff all the time. So yeah. that was the that was the very first time that I met you. I well, I thought you had, you probably yeah, I always you, say you probably don't remember that. I was I just one of like a bunch. Have, 10 that will work for a hundred that will work for a thousand yep. that'll work. Yeah. I, I said that. Yeah. Oh, yep. good. No, the yep. thing I remember that we did together. No, nope, we can't um, tell that story. No, I'm just kidding. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I told you we were going to talk about the time we robbed the bank. Lisa, Jane. Uh, 
<laughs> yeah, that's it. Uh, <laughs> you know, the, the time we, uh, they paid us to go speak at, on a panel for the, what I forgot what they were calling it at that time, because I'm not into all that, uh, advanced unit leader class or whatever it was for the, remember they had this thing and they brought us both down for a panel and you and I were on the panel together and I know how much you like to um, speak on the mic, which is awesome. I'm not saying that's bad, but so when they said to me, do you want your own mic? I'm like, Oh no, give my mic to Carla. <laughs> I, will, I'll, I won't even have to work. I'll just get to sit here. This will be awesome. Yeah, I, do I was like so happy I was on your panel. <laughs> yeah. My days of panels are over though. I th I'm retired. I'm hanging that up. I'm much oh, more yeah, it was AUL, AUL Academy. Remember we got flown down to Orlando or something. Yeah. And, yeah. I, I'm more into the virtual stuff. Like I really, really am. I would rather be virtual than live, which everybody's like, you're so much better live. And I'm like, yeah, but with virtual, I can be anywhere and I'm at my house. Like I can be in front of a lot of people and still be yeah. at my house. I kind of like so. in person. I don't get the thing that I like to travel for and do those things for. I don't necessarily like to speak. That's uncomfortable. So I have to make myself do it. What I like is to force myself to do things that I normally wouldn't do at home, like hail my own taxi or figure out my own reservation or whatever it is. All that stuff is a foreign territory for me. And every time I have to do it, it's inspirational or I end up meeting someone that's really interesting on the plane or whatever i'm that person so that's yeah, i'm not happen. that person i'm like don't talk to me i'm sleeping like i'm just i don't, I I don't like it you would be like no <laughs> I, I don't want to hail my own cab like no i don't want to learn that skill like i can i learned uber and left and like that well, was I mean, like, that's a skill too getting. though i wasn't doing that at first either every time i've gone out i've had to have to figure something new out and that's helpful for me just sitting here all day seeing three people a month is not as helpful. I'm more well, inspired. I'm on social by media, <laughs> and which is changing like 24 seven all the time. So I am always learning something oh, new. I think when I'm when I'm out of the house, it's more like my vacation, my free time, because that's just what I do. Um, you know, I do social media, I study social media all the time, and so I'm always learning something new. So when I go oh out God, of town, that, I'm like, I want to go on vacation. <laughs> the <laughs> AUL Academy was 2012, somebody wrote. <gasps> That's a lot. I was only, I was only uh, uh, let's see, uh, 15 at the time. Oh, shut Yeah, that would be good. Yeah, and I Just was 20. 15, kids. <laughs> <laughs> was, I was 20. <laughs> yeah. Don't we be putting dates in there. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> So yeah, then then of course you've been up, um, and and I'll tell you the truth. When Molly Molly's the one that said, "Oh, invite Carla up to come up the house," I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you were more fun than I thought. I don't know why I didn't think you were that much fun. I guess it's because the only interaction I'd had with you that much was not personally, but you'd stand up and said stuff at some of the meetings. So I didn't have like the best. Uh, I didn't know you were fun and I didn't want people coming to the house that weren't fun for the the weekend, you know, and I didn't know you were fun. So I went on, um, I went on Molly say so that you were fun and you were fun. You were fun. I am. I, am. I, yeah. I think that I, I'm not really good with new people being in my life or um, meeting people for the first time. I have to get used to somebody before I open up. Um, when it's face to face, obviously when I'm online, it's different. Um, but when I am face to face I, and especially like interactions and like quick interactions or interactions at business meetings, I'm just like getting to where I have to go and like getting back to wherever I can feel like I can relax. I'm not. Um, and I, I try to be like, hey, <laughs> first of all, but it's just not as easy for me as it is for other people. I am much more comfortable talking on a stage from far away or on the internet from far away than I am with the one-on-one -on -one interactions. But I mean, I've always wanted to build my business online. I've always wanted to build my brand online. I've always been about online. I think there are people that, you know, it's your preferred way to do things. There are people that are face-to-face -face people and they're more comfortable with that. And that's where their vibe is. And they like that. And there are tons of other people that are exactly like me and they're, perfectly comfortable behind the camera 
but the one-on-one interaction till you get to know somebody is just it's is just it an awkward. extrovert introvert thing i don't i wouldn't consider myself an introvert um i just think it's my preferred mm, method of being in the world. And I am very careful with like, I don't, I don't, I don't know what to, I don't know how to say it. Um, I just, I prefer to be online. I prefer to be, to have that um, one-on-one communication. And I've found some people find it really hard to build that relationship online. And I don't. And I think a lot of it, I I know Gen Z, I believe, is a is a little more like me. I'm a millennial. I did not. I grew up with Gen X, but I am a millennial. I'm one of the older millennials when people like are like calling 18 year olds millennials. I'm like, they're not millennials. Okay, (laughs) Millennials are old now, you know. Um, so quit talking about the kids nowadays, okay? We've got kids and some of us got grandkids, okay? You know, like we're not babies anymore. We've grown up. Give it give all your flack to Generation Z. Um, but we just are more comfortable online. And I have figured out how to develop relationships online with people. Like I have some some people that I have never met before. Probably some of these people I wouldn't know if I walked past on the street, but we have developed relationships around how much they love cats, how much I love cats. And we we connect on that level. So like um, one of them hadn't been on the and I don't know this person. All I know about them is they have five cats and they live in Texas. And um, I hadn't seen them on the app in a couple of days because we interact a lot. And I just sent them a message and I was like, hey, what's going on? I haven't seen you on the app. And they were like, you know, oh, my goodness. Thanks for noticing. Um, I haven't been on Instagram. I've been studying for a test. Uh, I'm going to start posting pictures again tomorrow. So you can build that. Rel- and we we talk about nothing really but cats. It's not of any, you know, substantial Converse, they're not having heart to hearts. Um, now I have had some people reach out to me about feet because um, some people don't know it. I have a cat that is diagnosed with cancer and it's not looking good now. He's help. He's fine other than cancer. Um, you know, he's not suffering or anything, but we're just, we've started the countdown. And so I had people reach out to me about that, but you know, it's just fun conversations. It's just, checking in with people and you can do that online the same way you do face to face. And I think the biggest thing for me this upcoming year, which is why I started to grow like I grew was because I finally got into a rhythm of connecting with people online. And it really is just caring about people, talking with people the same you would your best friend or somebody face to face. But once you have these relationships and these connections and you talk to them and they talk back and you talk to them and you talk back, the conversations get easier. And they, it seems like you, you've been friends with this person forever. And again, I don't know. I don't know the parents of these cats other than I talk to them on Instagram and I know their location and I know their animals, but there's still a connection there and we can have fun and we can celebrate and enjoy each other, which is what that cat mommy is all about. That cat mommy, I decided at first, I really didn't know what I was going to do with it. I just knew that I wanted to build a brand around the one thing that I love because they say, build your brand around something you love. You better love whatever you build your brand around. And um, I I said, I'm the most stubborn person in the world. I tried to prove people wrong by doing the opposite of what they tell me to do just so I can prove they were right and I was wrong. I do that all the time. And so I built a brand around something I didn't care about. And then I was like, this sucks. So I started building the cat mom brand. I didn't know where I wanted to go with it. And in April of 2020, I decided that the world sucked (laughs) at that point in time. Like there was a lot of people that were unhappy, a lot of people that had a lot of sadness in their life. And I was like, you know, I think I can just make people smile. Like I was like, what can I do to make a difference. You know, what can I do that I'm not doing to make a difference? And I was like, if I can just make people smile or make them laugh, that might be that. I mean, that's a gift that I can give people and it's free and I can do it from my home. 
And that is really when, shortly after that, is when the cat mom brand started to take off because I knew I, I was doing something I love and I had a goal in mind that was outside of myself. It was how can I show up and provide something for somebody else? And even if it was something as small as a smile, that was it. That was my baseline. I was like, I just want to make somebody happy today, even if it's one person. And then it just, the account just started to grow and grow and grow and grow. And we grow and grow every single week, every single week. I'm totally shocked. I am totally shocked by how many people have reached out to me. And, and I love it too. I love when I see the comments come in and they're like, oh, this is, you know, this made me happy or that's hilarious or something like that. Like, I really enjoy that I can at least deliver a moment of happiness to somebody. So, And, you know, the reason I wanted to have you on here isn't uh, this is a work thing, but the things that you're saying do apply to someone that is doing what they love as far as if they're repping for a company or whatever they're doing, if they're building a business. It does apply to them because we have to build relationships individually with people online to have social media work. Too many people, uh, especially in direct sales, are just throwing up their company uh, created ads and saying, why is no one buying from me? And uh, I mean, they need to do what you're doing is individually build relationships with people. Right. And I mean, I honestly think for me, if you're serious about building big, online you need to be building a brand it doesn't matter what your brand is around and that's another thing people get hung up on is they if, if you're talking about big versus small small if you're looking to build small you're you're looking to do face-to-face -face and some online and both and all that kind of stuff and you're not really wanting to take over online you don't need a brand you just do your own thing and and, and these steps will still work for you but if you're like me and you've always wanted to have a business online go with a brand. The big mistake that I made was I built a brand around the products that I was selling. And that I don't find to be as effective as building a brand around something you love. And then, and then when people love you and they're like, Oh my goodness, I love you. I love your cats. I love your whatever. Then you can say, well, I just want to tell you about this product that I love. And it's the exact same way as when you talk to your friends. If I go up to my friend and I'm like, oh, my gosh, I have to tell you about this product that I love or I have to tell you about this meal that I ate or I have to tell you this movie that I watched. You have to go see it. They don't feel like they're being sold something because they're not being necessarily sold something. They're being given information about why you love something, which a doesn't feel like a sales technique. So it feels good. It doesn't feel awkward for you or the person you're talking to. And B, it converts. Because it's, it's not spammy. It's not salesy. It doesn't feel awkward or weird or whatever. But you have to have that relationship first. And so you have to show up for people online and give a crap about them. Because that is the one thing, if I had to say, I see people getting wrong all the time. They're just trying to sell some stuff. You're just trying to, trying to sell some stuff. If you're trying to just sell some stuff, figure out a way to run Facebook ads, Google ads, Instagram ads, and pour all of your money into just promoting ads to sell a certain product. It's expensive, but it works. Works really good. Running ads works fantastic if you're just trying to sell something and you don't care about building a relationship with people online. The kicker with that is if you sell a product that multiple people sell, they can go somewhere else. You don't give a crap about them. They run across me. Me and you sell the exact same thing. They have a relationship with me. They love me. They love my cats. They're going to buy from me. And they're not going to buy from you because you don't care about them. So it, it, it essentially the same techniques that work outside of online doesn't, doesn't change online. It just changes the way that you do it. And if you're not doing it that way, you're shooting yourself in the foot. Yeah, and I want to get your, I, I think, I hope, I hope, I hope, <laughs> I know your opinion on this, because I say, JP's going to laugh, because I brought this up on his call, too. <laughs> um, posting inappropriate stuff, like, no. oh, my God, oh, no. I'm saving a folder now of inappropriate posts, and I'm going to white out their names, and I'm going to put, even someone the other day, they put a picture of their 
um, incision on their foot and they actually tagged me and said, don't look at this Lisa Wilbur because I'm on this all the time. And I'm like, don't post that. Your potential customers do not want to see your stuff. Well, I mean, that's, again, that goes back to if you have a brand. Don't want to see it. If, if you, you were in person, your friends don't want to see your incisions. Well, I mean, right. some might, but I mean, I don't know. I don't know people's relationships. Like, I don't know. <laughs> but, like, I mean, I think it would have to be a close friend. Um, but I would say it goes back to building a brand. Like, for me. Because I'm not going to post, like, look at this crazy thing. When you build a brand, it's all about the brand. So I'm going to be focusing on cat stuff. I'm not going to be focusing on my personal stuff because it's not about me. It's about the people right. that are following you. So do the people that are following you want to see that? I mean, I guess like, I mean, here's the thing. People watch that Dr. Pimple Popper stuff all the time. So if like that's your brand and you want to like show yourself doing whatever, then like go for it. But that should be separate from your personal stuff. Like as far as my <laughs> personal yeah. Facebook page like I don't, I don't have a bunch of people following me on my personal Facebook page. Don't friend me because I'm really not on my personal page, like at all on Facebook. I'm inside <laughs> groups. I'm on my stuff. Don't, don't friend me. So um, your your page is called <laughs> Cat Mommy that you do want people to go to. That, that Cat Mommy, cat but I would cat. go to Instagram because on uh, everything from Instagram is just shared over to Facebook. So if you don't have Instagram, you can go to that Cat Mommy on Facebook and see some of the content, but all of the content is over on Instagram. Um, some won't share over like the reels, the funny videos don't automatically share over. Actually, any video won't automatically share over to Facebook. So you're missing out on some of the video content if you're only on my Instagram. Um, but I, I don't, I, I mean, it's just all cat stuff. If you go to my Carla Lytle brand, it's all about how to sell, how to run your business on social media or it's all about social media. My personal Facebook page, number one, I don't, post anything on there that would really be of any interest to anybody. It's just randomness, but you can post whatever you want on your social media. If you want to do whatever, but here's the kicker. Don't share it with the world. Nice. Block it. Like don't run, don't use, if you're not going to be professional, don't use your Facebook profile to run your business because you're connecting. Well, your even if you don't use it to run your business, business. Right. People will like I look up my leaders, whether or not they gave me that page or not. I look but up. But they don't people. have to have it. They don't have to broadcast it public. Right. Like if right. You wanna, if, if you want to share right, right. Good craziness, point. then don't don't let your customers be your friend on Facebook and don't but share the it for the whole have, world to see. The ones that have a personal wall and think they're going to get customers from it. By the way, JP says I'm attached to this topic. <laughs> but it's because I see so many people doing wild ass stuff. It's like, no. And somebody else said, which I say all the time, um, when you put politics on your page, you're alienating half, half the potential people and then they complain that they're not getting customers see that's the problem if you're expecting to get customers from your personal page you've got to monitor what you put on there you can't you can't put things that are divisive like that For me, <laughs> like I, stuff, I, like politics stuff you can't put that on your personal page if it's public and you're trying to get business from it <laughs> i i personally don't think that you should be building a business or a brand on a personal profile because there's a difference in a personal profile and a Facebook page mm -hmm. and again if you're serious about doing it long term if you're just trying to Don't get you think people look at that anyway though no, we'll leave it. Most people don't have their profile set for the entire world to see. Oh, they, okay. they keep it at just friends because you're in because you're in marketing and, it, and before pages, that was really all there was, was the profile. So like Facebook separated it for a reason. And it is right. definitely easier to build a personal profile, but you're building a profile around people being friends with you. And the moment that you post something, it doesn't matter if it's controversial or if it's just you think it's funny and they don't. They can unfriend you like that yeah. because it's you and them then in this relationship, not 
your brand, which they're interested in and loving on people as that brand. So it's a separate, it's a separation of that because like, I don't care about my friends on Instagram. I don't care what, who they voted for. I don't care, you know, if they want to post that they love somebody that I don't love, or, you know, I got a bowl on my butt, they're showing their mom or whatever. Like, I don't, I don't care if they post that stuff. Because I, I, love my butt. Uh, I don't know, I just pulled that out of thin air. But I don't care about that because that's not my brand isn't about that. My brand is about relating to them on a different level. And this could be right. if you sell makeup, it could be makeup. Because like why do you need to talk about politics if you love makeup? Why do you need to talk about your back breaking or whatever? I, I think I'm I'm talking more about the people who don't have it separate because they're that's most people, truthfully. Then here's um, the thing. Here's the thing oh. with most people that do that. I know that there are people that, that are terrible. I do that. I know that there are people that are successful with it. I'm not going to say that people aren't successful with it, but they're not successful with it because for any other reason other than people are connecting to them. So they're connecting with them right. because they like them, they like what they stand for, they like what they're posting. The minute that changes and they get mad at you, right. it's right. over. Right. So like that's why I don't advocate for doing it that way, which is fine. Again, fine if you do. And again, back when you built, there was nothing else. I mean, it was what it was. It was just all uh, profiles. There was no pages on there. But if you want to post controversial stuff, you want to do all that. You want to just YOLO and not well, worry about being professional. What the, uh, what the benefit to posting a picture of the boil on my butt would be. <laughs> who, I mean, who benefits from that, really? I don't know. I like I said, people watch the Dr. Pimple Popper. I mean, it's not for me. Like I think it's so gross, but some people love that. I actually that saw stuff. somebody the other day post a picture of their dead pet. Yeah, that makes me sad. That makes that me makes, sad. I, I I don't understand who that helps. It certainly didn't help me. I had a nightmare about it that night. I'm like, don't do that. No. Don't do that. Out. Oh. So I uh, yeah, please, please just. <laughs> I mean, I just again, if you're not gonna be. If you and if you don't, there's a lot of people who don't care. They're like, I want to post whatever I want to post. Fine, don't right. run your business Just that don't way. Come don't to post me and say, Why is no one connecting don't with me? Don't post in public, right? Don't yeah. post in public like that. I mean, it's not that hard, you know, to, to separate that, that. setting, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, it's just not. But and then if you people have that a are Facebook that, though, don't, don't have a good judge on what would be good to post or not. <laughs> So they wouldn't know enough to change the setting. Well, and again, that's building a connection with people as yourself. So you're right. going to connect. You're always going to connect with like-minded people, um, right. especially online based on what you post. So whether it's about cats or it's personal. So the only people that you're going to be able to connect with if you're posting that kind of content is other people that post that kind of content. Right, if that's right. not your ideal customer, that's not somebody you're trying to attract. That's a bad business plan just to start. Yeah, I had a customer um, go on and on about her political opinion. And then uh, she is, matter of fact, uh, somebody called me on this because they happen to be with me. And um, it was two extremes so somebody very, very conservative, somebody very, very liberal. And I had somebody with me. And when we left both of those, she said, I thought you agreed with the first person till I saw you talk to the second person. And now I think you're the other side of that. And, and I said, the whole point was that you, you shouldn't, uh, neither one of them know for sure whether I'm agreeing with them or not, because I'm not selling that. That's not, I'm, I'm here to give them a service of selling them face cream or whatever I was selling that day. And I said, it's, I'm, I don't care if they, I said, I wanted to say, oh, I hadn't thought about that. I made it very generic when I talked to them. I let them say whatever they want, but I didn't put in my two cents because I'm a salesman. I'm not trying to get my opinion across to them. It's well, my you're not, relevant. You're not trying to build a business around political opinion because no. there are no there are people on YouTube that are raking in money that talk about nothing right, but politics. Right. But this right. is the kicker. That's their brand. And these right. I, these people sell coffee, they sell hats, they sell 
So they're ma not only making money off YouTube mon oh, monetization. And they're doing that they're being political? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's why I'm saying, like, oh. if you if you love politics and you you have an opinion and you're outspoken, start a YouTube channel. Like, if that's where your passion is, go for it. Now, you're probably only going to be able to sell stuff to people that politically agree with you. <laughs> but, like, I'm not selling stuff to dog owners. You know what I mean? Like, we all have our our own thing. Again, it all, for me, goes back to branding. It's all yeah. about niching into something that you love, whatever it is. It can be bath and body. It can be spa nights. It can be fitness. It can be whatever. Niching into that. Because if you love it, it's not work. I don't feel like I'm, I'm working when I say, I call it, I'm playing with my cats and I get really cute pictures of my cats and I make them do fun stuff. Like, it, how do you make them do that? Really, I can't picture Maisie doing that. When I have a cute picture of Maisie, it's totally random. I mean, I got that by taking a thousand pictures and this one ended up looking right. Oh, is that what you're doing too? Oh, okay. Well, that, but that is the key. <laughs> um, I, I just actually, uh, filmed a video. It's going to be going on my YouTube channel. You can search my YouTube channel and follow it by, if you type my name in YouTube, it'll come up, but it's youtube.com backslash Carla Lytle. Um, and you can go over to my YouTube page and subscribe. This week, I'm releasing a video that, on my YouTube channel that says my tips for taking photos because I have oh, had nice. so many people, pet photos, because I've had so many people reach out to me and go, what camera are you using? These photos are fantastic. And I'm like, I'm using my phone, which is at this point, like two years old. So it's not even like a super new phone. I've been researching these phones. Anytime I have to research anything like a phone or a camera, anything like that, it gives me a nosebleed because I like research it to death before I make up my mind. Um, so I haven't got a new one yet. So I'm like, it's an old, older phone. Um, and, but I mean, I have so many people commenting me. Uh, commenting to me about how much they love my photos. I'm like, I'll do this video so that you know everything I do. But one of the keys that I talk about inside that video is you take a ton of pictures. All of my pictures for Instagram are done one day a week and it takes one hour to get them. And Good. yep. But it is rapid succession of photos. If you're trying to get pep, it's kind of like a kid. <laughs> if you're going to take a picture of your baby, you know, what if they see or what if they're moving around, you know, or they're not smiling or it's like the oh, exact the same, same thing with a pet. Like that the is the same, same thing with the, the kid too. I yeah. got pictures, but then I got like a thousand of them that weren't, they were, there was one There's you, I call it the money shot. There's usually one money shot out of the whole mess. Yeah. You have to, if you're taking pictures of animals, you, you need patience and you need to take a ton of pictures because that is, how you get the good ones. I mean, I sit down, I take a ton of pictures. Then the, the thing that I do very next is I can go through them and I can delete like so many of them because they're blurry because that cats move, you know, they move fast. And again, I'm on my phone. I don't have a fancy camera. Um, and no, no, so you just take I can't a bunch delete of them. any. <laughs> what? I'm weird about it. I don't delete any. So I've got like tens of thousands of pictures of the kid oh, yeah. and the cats and the dog because it's like deleting them i won't delete any because it's precious <laughs> no i delete all the bad photos that are that are no good the cat's not even looking at the camera like it it for sure all of that gets deleted um because i have to go through and then edit them and a lot of times i'll get like 10 or 15 images and they're all great and i'm like oh, oh. But now now i'm having to choose like Okay, I can't use 15. Even if I use a carousel post on Instagram, I have to whittle these down to 10 and I have to like go through them. But a lot of it also is I hold all my content. Like I have all of my content on my computer organized into albums because if I'm going to, let's just say something happens, I get sick, I can't produce content that week. I can go into my folder, look at all my content that I've saved over the years and I have something to pull from so that my account is never down or goes through a lengthy period of time where nothing is posted. Cause on Instagram, that is an engagement killer to go through, um, to go for an extended period of time where people don't know where you're at. They don't follow you every day that you post on Instagram, you're gaining followers, but you're also losing followers. So if you don't post, you're not gaining the followers. So your account is always going to start tanking 
um, because you're not making up for it and gaining it. Um, and and now, you post them every day because you, yeah. you when you say an extended period of time, you're talking a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Instagram. I mean, the goal on the goal on Instagram, if you're running a successful Instagram account is to post at least one to three times a day. The bigger accounts post three times a day. I can't do that because I have other things that I do. Um, it may get to the point one day where I'm able to do content like that and I can post multiple times. a day. But I mean, that's the the goal. And Another thing I will say, this is huge helpful if you're looking to build big online, is you need to pick one platform. One, not 10, not five, not eight, not three, okay? One, because it's insanely hard to create content that is of any substance and have a life and run your business on multiple platforms. Now, I do think it's awesome if you can repurpose content to drive people to your main platform. So if you pick Facebook, then share all your Facebook videos to YouTube, but direct everybody back to Facebook. If you are on Instagram, repurpose those Instagram videos for YouTube, but then drive everybody back to your Instagram account. And you can do that very easily by just telling people inside the video or whatever to follow you on Instagram. Um, and like I said, my that cat mommy on Instagram, there's a little button you can tap and it will share everything over to your Facebook page. And that button is taggled, toggled on. And so it automatically does it for me, but I'm not going to Facebook to put any new content that isn't already on Instagram because Instagram is the main platform. And I, I think Instagram is one of the easier platforms. I know a lot of people disagree with that, but if you're building a brand, you're building a business, you want to be able to sell multiple products to multiple people. Um, Instagram for me feels more shoppable. It feels like a place where you're using images and storytelling. And, and I love my two favorites right now are Instagram and YouTube. They're one hands down my favorite ones and they are the ones that I get seen more and I get found more from people that I don't know. Those two channels, Instagram and YouTube, because people are searching them more. Um, and I will say I haven't done TikTok. I have looked into it. I know a lot of people love it. it you can go viral on TikTok really fast. Um, but again, if you're going to be doing TikTok, you have to show up and be consistent and if you have a main platform that you're using outside of TikTok, like if Instagram is your main platform, make mm -hmm. sure that you are driving people from TikTok back over to that Instagram where that's your primary thing. And I've even thought about um, just having a TikTok channel for all of my Instagram videos and literally just sharing the exact same thing that I'm sharing over on Instagram, not necessarily creating new content because that'll drive you crazy. I mean, it's just you need the people that I know that do Insta do any channel well, um, whether it's Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and they have hundreds of thousands of followers, they have a team. So you yeah. look at these yeah. people that have hundreds of thousands of followers and you're like, oh, well, they're posting it four YouTube videos a week and they all look amazing and they're posting on their Instagram. And, yeah. Yeah, because they have somebody filming the videos and they have somebody editing the videos and they're not trying to do it all by themselves. And most entrepreneurs or people that are starting a business or trying to gain a following, you're doing it all yourself. You're writing the copy. I mean, you're taking the pictures, you're editing the photos, you're doing, and that takes time. And you still need to eat and take care of your family or do whatever you're doing and time just runs out. Now, that's really good advice. And it's good advice for all of the, for all of us that are doing different stuff, not yeah. just if we had an interest in cats. So I hope when when I have somebody on that does something different like you do, I hope that people are looking at it. Like last year, I don't know, last week, did you see Josh? He's funny. Yeah. You know, he, yeah. he had a video go viral just like two weeks ago. And it was, it was a funny one too. It was only like two minutes long or something. And it was podcasting right after sex. Oh. And he got 3,600. In, in two weeks. That's quite a bit of views on That's his YouTube awesome. channel. Yeah. And it was, awesome. it was funny. It was just like, hey, baby. And 
<laughs> he's on the microphone right after. <laughs> And he's like, he says that one of the, the funniest I thought he says, you know, just a note for next time, less teeth, maybe no teeth. Oh, God. Oh, no. Well, I, I think that was hilarious. I <laughs> think the highest on cat, that cat mom that I have on my Instagram channel, the highest I ever got was um, my Snuffleupagus reel received 26,000 views oh, in an hour. Um, Instagram has a, a shorter shelf life. So like once it, it kicks up real quick within the first couple of hours and it dies out and hardly anybody ever sees it. But um, yeah, 26,000 wow. was the highest I got in an hour. And then the next one after that was 7,000. And the next one after that was 400. And I'm like, that's another thing with, uh, getting a lot of views on a certain type of content and then I'll put out something and I'll think this is going to be really cute and people are going to love it because I'm always thinking about what can I do to make somebody smile what can I do to make people love something and then I post it and it's a dud and I'm like Kuvak. like I just <laughs> want this to go if you know cling on you know what that means if you don't I didn't hurt your sensitive ears but um I I was just like, you know, man, I really thought this was going to work and it didn't. And so uh, I was, you know, you never know. And that's the thing with content. You kind of have to keep trying different things to find out what your audience wants. But I went from Snuffleupagus video, 20, 26,000 views, 26, 27, somewhere in there, to The Catchler, which was my take on The Cat Bachelor. And it only got 400 views. And I was so <laughs> heartbroken because I was like, people are going to love this. And then it was like, <laughs> bah, 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 bah. but I mean, I got like, I think 10 comments and over a hundred likes on it, but it just didn't get the mass view that the other one had. So I was disappointed, but well, and the truth you though create... is you keep got to keep gotta make them out. Keep oh yeah. Cause you don't know which one's going to do big. So you just got to keep making them keep making content, keep creating content. And really with Instagram, a lot of it is hashtags. Um, so you could post the exact same video with a second of a different set of hashtags and it can have a different result. Mm -hmm. um, so playing around with your hashtags is also important because it hashtags on Instagram are so much like almost everything because that's how new people find you. Uh, but at the same time, you want to make sure that you're making those connections with people that you meet online and keeping those relationships and keeping it focused on the relationships that you have, as well as expanding to new people. Because if you forget about the people that got you to where you are, the people that are constantly liking your content, the people that are constantly commenting on your content, if you leave them behind, that is going to end up being a problem for you down the line. And it really is all about focusing on your main goal which should not be about selling product to people it should be about how can i connect with people how can i get people to connect with me and how can i enrich their lives because when you think about it from your audience's point of view and what you can deliver for your audience that is very attractive to people and i think that people look at it a lot differently when you show up as what can I offer, whether it's education or entertainment or whatever, what can I offer as opposed to what can I sell you? It just feels different. It, 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 it just, See, everything about it is different. See, I offer inappropriateness. See, I offer inappropriateness. Well, I would consider that entertainment. <laughs> I mean, you, so, people, so people, follow people, <laughs> people follow people for two main reasons. These are the two reasons that people follow people. They follow them to be educated in some way. You're providing information to them that they find valuable or they follow you to be entertained. Be entertaining. Yeah. Or you can do both. Some people can do both. They can educate and entertain. And that that's amazing as well. I but like teach, that's, teach cleavage dancing, cleavage dancing. Cle see, I don't know that you I don't know that anybody has ever done that before. I, I, and I'm <laughs> almost 100 percent positive that you could probably do a YouTube channel with that and make some money. Like every time somebody's like, 
I have this weird idea. I'm like, you could totally do a YouTube channel for that. Because whatever it is, it doesn't matter whatever you're into. There is somebody else out there who is into it too and will watch it. I mean, you know, I, I don't get it all. I don't get it. But, you know, I'm not going to judge either. And I tell people to go for it. You know, I have had people say to me, like, nobody's going to watch that. And I'm like, you have you been on YouTube lately? Like, yeah, have you seen no. some of the stuff that people watch? Yeah. Like, there's somebody that will watch anything. So I'm yeah, sure that you could teach thing. you could teach cleavage dancing classes and I bet you the video would get some hits. You do need to know. Yeah, I mean on YouTube the big kicker is using keywords. But again, it doesn't matter. That's my, that's my big thing. It doesn't matter. You just need to know the steps to making that brand or making that video getting it out to people and maybe there are people that that want to watch that people that want to learn how to do it yeah i mean i i, I tell people just to go with whatever just know the that your audience is of it all see i like well, being inappropriate hey I mean, let's talk briefly about uh <laughs> there's a guy called time? logan paul who is on youtube and he's very inappropriate and he lives in like a mansion so oh nice hey I mean, remember that time you were you were sitting at my kitchen table when we had one of the weekends and um, JP did your makeup and you put it online and someone said, that is 100% better than you. Oh yeah. <laughs> Cause I don't want, I'm, oh, we I'm not a big there. makeup person. I'm not a big, I'm not a big like, you know, fancy makeup I, person. I, I'm I just me. The person thought they were being nice, but it was like, <laughs> that no, was, it was not mean. Nice. I mean, it was just like, <laughs> yeah. I don't need. I don't like and, and I, I, <laughs> Well, and I don't think that I don't think that you need makeup to be beautiful. If it makes you feel beautiful to oh. wear it, then amazing. But nobody needs makeup to be beautiful. Like people are well, beautiful you know, I, the way they are. I bet you. I bet you you're going to say you don't remember saying this, but you did say to me one time, and I I I was shocked, and I still think about it. You said. You were surprised that I color my hair for me. You said most people do that for someone else. <laughs> and all this time, I, I it surprised me because I never thought about, because you, you said most people like oh, me yeah. to get whatever it was. You, you got, wait, 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 you got, wait, 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 you broke up. I'm, you blurred out. I single. I never thought it was for self. Did I misunderstand what you said back then? No, I did. I misunderstand. I just totally missed what you just said because you oh, you, you glitched. Okay, glitched. Okay. Um, a while back, you said to me you were surprised that I colored my hair for myself. You I must have misunderstood. I must have misunderstood that conversation. Oh, good. Because, because no, no. I mean, because no. I am all about dye your hair if it makes you feel better. Like, because I dye mine. Because I had blonde Cause hair I'm when I was born, for... and now it's turning brown. So yeah, I'm not, I'm not like, doing it for a man or to get a man. No, or a man. no. I was doing it because I want my hair brown. <laughs> no, I must have misunderstood what you said. Oh, good. I, I think I'm glad I think about that. Yeah, no. I mean, I I love you know if you want to dye your hair, dye your hair. It's all good. Um, because I dye my hair. I don't have any problem with that. I, in fact, well, I'll, I'm I'm a big hair dyer. Like if I get gray hair. When I, I get gray, when I get white. when I get more gray hair because I already have some, but I will always dye it um, just because that's my <laughs> preference. Um, and I think I must have misunderstood what you said because I don't. Good. Yeah. No, I'm glad about that because no, I don't get the gray yeah. hair trend. So maybe that was, oh, I don't I, I was like yeah. I don't I don't get it. It's fine, but I don't I don't understand the gray hair trend. But I'm not a trendy. Fashionista. I am just a a regular person. Yeah. Like that. You know, I'm not a big. I'm not I'm jumping not off the train. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sorry? jumping off. The, I'm not jumping off the hair train anytime soon. Yeah, no. Mm -mm. No. Although, I don't you know, think that's super fancy. But you know who's pulling it off good is Erica, my buddy Erica. She jumped off the train, and she's actually she's doing salt and pepper, and it's actually working on her. Yeah. I mean, I, some I, people I, can I pull it off. Out. You're you're pulling it off. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't. People, I personally didn't want to try. <laughs> I don't want to. Yeah, try me either. This. I'm out. No, because I mean, I'm it out. just seems like you, you, 
But I mean, it's like that for like short hair. Some people have the face for short hair. Some people, like when I have short hair, not a good look for me. So <laughs> I think people just have to do whatever makes them comfortable. Because if you feel comfortable in your own skin, it's always going to be better for you. You're always going to show up and confidence is key. Okay, so the last thing I want to make sure we talk about is uh, the fireworks video. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh, no, that was fun. I'm not going to show it. I didn't show it. We all made the pinky swear we wouldn't show it. I don't have was... it. I, I mean, I took the video, but I don't know that you, I mean, I'm sure it was so on an old okay. phone. Oh, I should post it then. That was forever yeah. ago. You're talking about, oh, no, don't show it. You know, I can say a lot of bad cuss words in it. Yeah, no, yeah, you that's don't. Not I don't even yeah, think you cuss. All you hear oh, yeah, is you yelling going, ah! No, yeah, it's no, I cuss. Uh, Bib, Bib and Mullins, when I, and, and I don't know about you, but I forget that Bib's a blind guy because he's just walking around like the rest of us, and yeah. half the time I forget. So when they both said, we're going out to do fireworks in the backyard, I didn't think that much of it, and although you must have because you were out there filming it. <laughs> I knew it wasn't going to go well. Like, anytime I see two, anytime I see guys around fireworks, I'm automatically oh. like, this is going to be bad yeah. because they're they're guys, and they do. They're, they're just stupid. Weird. Yeah, I, well, I didn't want to go there. I was going to say weird, but they're just, they're full of all this energy, and it's always like, hey, y'all, watch this, and it's all, so I'm, anytime I'm around dudes with fireworks i know there's going to be something that happens it's just oh, that God. Thing, it if was... you have multiple men standing around fireworks i promise you get your camera ready because it's going to be a kodak I moment you, it was a half inch away from mullins having a fireworks edema <laughs> that's, that's what happened and, and he and uh, he didn't know it, and Bib didn't know it at the time until he heard us all screaming. Because you start go right past his ass cheek. <laughs> I mean, it was like uh, it was like a cartoon, oh. like when the little oh, um, so coyote funny. rides the rocket in a cartoon, and it like barely dodges. Like that's what. It reminded oh, that me was of. so funny. That was so funny. Oh, anyway, that that's it. This has been fun. Yay, thank you thanks. so much. And thanks you know that me. the whole thing is something we haven't been talking enough about is the personal brand is how you do it on social media. All we've been talking about is what not to post by me because I say that all the time because every day when I'm looking through trying to do Facebook espionage, I see somebody's open wound or they're talking about how sick they are and all that stuff. And that drives me crazy because I know prospects are going, I ain't ever getting my stuff. I ain't getting my stuff. This, this, this woman is always sick. I ain't getting my stuff. And that's all I think about is they shouldn't post stuff that makes customers not want to buy from them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, and, and they might, I, I'm guessing that when you see that, they either a don't care because they're not trying to build their business online. But usually they're complaining or, they're not getting business. Well, usually that's the, the second people, part is right? they don't, they don't get it, which is yeah. if, if you have like, there's people that have, that have problems like diabetes that they do talk about their diabetes. They have a YouTube channel developed all around that, how to right. take care of your diabetes and like, right you know, all of their problems and how they came out the other side of it. The kicker is if you're going to share a low moment in your life, you don't need to share it at the moment you're low. You need to yeah. get through because that doesn't, again, it's thinking about your audience. That doesn't help them. You right. need to share it when you're on the other side of it. So you can say, here's my hand. Here's how I got pulled myself up. Here's the information. It goes back again to educate or entertain. and everything is a thing but the kicker is do you want to be known for so that thing right, right. Do you and if, be I mean, known again, for, yeah but you got to be marketing your brand correctly you got to be see? in those places you should be in facebook groups that have diabetes that talk about diabetes and you know whatever do you Did have you a see? kitty no, oh, I, I uh, yeah, that would have been good, but no, no, we got Bo, which you, uh, no, uh, you think I'm a traitor? There he is. Traitor. Oh, he said, <laughs> he sits right near me all the time. But this is a picture the kid drew of Bo. Isn't that oh, awesome? That's really cute. She does such a good job. Yes, he does. Is that your birthday card? He. he. 
pronouns. He does. Yes, he does. <laughs> Sorry. That's Bo. That's Bo. Yeah. That was my birthday the other day. Yeah. Um, so I said, was that your birthday card? It's a, yes. It's actually um, that was my birthday present. It's actually my anniversary. I no longer call it a birthday. It's the anniversary of my 29th birthday. Oh. So see, see that way I'm I'm actually celebrating anniversaries. We did. I love that. Yeah, and somebody brought me today, Mr. Greg brought me, his daughter made this for me, my theme. Do you remember what my theme word is for the year? You probably didn't know what it was. Phoenix, I, I uh, Phoenix rising from the ashes. Oh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Way, right, uh, and brought me a Phoenix. Wow, that's really awesome? good too. Kids burned, are amazing. Burned in wood. And that's Mr. Oh, Greg's that's daughter. really good. Yeah, that's you know, super, awesome? that's super hard to do. To keep your yeah. like hands straight to do something uh, like that, yeah. yeah. I, mine would have been all swirled. I would have had a line going straight across the middle because I would have got distracted. Like Meryl, oh well, I need a new piece of wood. My well, bad. Anyway, I I will go for now. Don't forget, stay on. I'm gonna just end the live. Okay. And um, <laughs> thank you very much. And make sure you look for Carla on YouTube and Instagram. Is your thing on Instagram that they just look for your name? They can look for that cat mommy on Instagram, or they can search my name. If you search my name, you need to make sure you click on that cat mommy. Once you get there, you'll get over to my personal Instagram account, which I don't hardly post on that. If you want more social media training from me, if you type Carla Lytle into YouTube or go to youtube.com or just go to carlalytle.com. There's a whole website full of videos and training and tons of stuff for you. Awesome. I say I'm very Googleable. <laughs> Googleable. Oh, That's yeah. awesome. That's a new word. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And, and this is going to be on my YouTube channel shortly. Thank you, everyone.